Today, we'll dive into the world of Disenchantment, a series that made its debut in 2018, boasting a grand total of 5 seasons and a whopping 50 episodes. The series follows the adventures of Princess Bean, an alcoholic and rebellious young woman who is the daughter of King Zog of Dreamland. Bean is accompanied by her two companions, Elfo, an elf who left his magical homeland in search of something different, and Lucy, a personal demon assigned to Bean who often leads her into mischief. Without further ado, let's begin. In the first episode, Princess Bean's forced wedding to Prince Geisberg goes awry when she gets drunk and rejects him. Chaos ensues, leading to her escape with Elfo, a disillusioned elf, and Lucy, her personal demon. They flee through Dreamland, pursued by royal knights and the jilted prince. Meanwhile, Elfo's journey from the Elfwood takes him to the horrors of war and a chance encounter with a bizarre couple. The trio seeks the Wishmaster, but ends up in the lair of the Washmaster. Cornered by their pursuers and facing an arranged marriage or death, they choose to leap off a cliff, hoping for a miracle. They survive the fall and are taken captive by Prince Merkimer and the Knights of the Zog Table. Merkimer plans to marry Bean to secure an alliance, much to her dismay. Meanwhile, King Zog is interested in using Elfo's magical elf blood for the elixir of life. Bean tries to find a way out of the wedding, but her plans go awry, leading to a disastrous bachelor party that results in Merkimer's apparent death by walruses. However, he returns, saving the day but causing an international incident with their allies, the Bozaks. Meanwhile, King Zog seeks a way to create the Elixir of Life and consults the wizard Sorcerio. Subsequently, Bean, Lucy, and Elfo go to the market but encounter a parade, leading to Elfo's kidnapping by an entertainer. Sorcerio and Oddval, the king's right-hand man, obtains a magical book and learns that they need the Eternity Pendant and Elfblood to make the Elixir. Bean, along with some knights, visits Gwen the Witch, who directs them to her ex-husband Malthus on the Devil's Snow Cone. Malthus recounts his story about the pendant and points them toward the edge of the world where the pendant was traded. They retrieve the pendant and chase after Big Joe, who has kidnapped Elfo. Along the way, they discover the lost city of Cremora, turned to stone by the Empire of Maru. They obtain the vial with the elf blood, but encounter an assassin and Big Joe. After a battle, they escape, fill the city with sand, and return home with the vial. After their failed attempts to use Elfo's blood to activate the pendant and bring people back to life, an expert reveals that Elfo is not a true elf, which angers Zog and leads to his banishment from Dreamland. Oddval allows Bean and Lucy to go find Elfo, and they journey to Elfwood where Elfo is reunited with his kin. While there, Elfo learns that he is half-elf, but the revelation is cut short by the arrival of Zog's men who intend to capture the elves for their blood. After a fierce battle, they manage to repel the knights and seal off Elfwood. However, a stray arrow kills Elfo. Zog, who wanted the elixir to revive Bean's mother, Dagmar, now has some elf blood and offers Bean the choice to use the pendant on either Elfo or Dagmar. Bean chooses to revive Dagmar, and the episode ends with their tearful reunion. Dagmar's return to life leads to a series of revelations and confrontations in Dreamland. Bean reunites with her mother, and they attend a pub together, sharing moments of connection. Meanwhile, tensions rise in the castle as Second Queen Una, feeling threatened, plots her revenge. During a council meeting, most council members are mysteriously turned into stone statues. Bean, Dagmar, and Lucy investigate the castle, discovering that Una is still a threat within. Lucy then uses a magic ball to uncover a shocking truth about Bean's past. Turns out, Dagmar's death was accidental and that he intended to poison the king but ended up dying when Bean switched their wine glasses. Bean's relationship with her father becomes strained as Zog tries to warn her, and the episode ends with Bean and Dagmar fleeing onto a mysterious ship while Lucy encounters a sinister presence. Zog, losing his crown, is the only one who isn't a stone statue in Dreamland, hinting at darker times ahead. And an after credit scene teases Elfo's fate on an unknown shore. Queen Dagmar manipulates Princess Bean by making her believe that Queen Una caused the misfortune in Dreamland. Bean travels with Dagmar to Maru, where she meets her aunt and uncle, Emperor Cloyd and Becky. She becomes increasingly suspicious of her family's intentions and stumbles upon a secret room, discovering a painting of herself. 
Bean realizes that her family is planning something sinister, and her suspicions are confirmed when she finds a stonification potion and confronts Dagmar. Dagmar locks Bean in her room but eventually reveals her true intentions, leading to a confrontation where Bean escapes into a hidden room with Lucy. They accidentally cause an explosion, leading to a stairway to hell, and Bean decides to go there to rescue Elfo, who is in heaven. However, Dagmar tries to stop her, resulting in a struggle that involves Jerry, one of her siblings who sacrifices himself to help Bean escape to hell. While Zog and Murkimer bond amid the chaos of an invasion by the Bozaks in Dreamland, Bean and Lucy venture into hell on a mission to rescue Elfo. In heaven, Elfo's attempts to convince God to send him to hell prove futile until he finally insults God's new favorite, Jerry, earning him a direct ticket to hell. Bean and Lucy navigate the treacherous landscapes of hell to find the Book of the Dead and Elfo's location, only to be confronted by Asmodium, the Lord of Darkness. Their heated confrontation leads to Lucy's unexpected promotion to Uber Demon Level 4 as he battles Asmodium to save his friends. Ultimately, they escape hell with Elfo's soul and return him to life on Earth. Meanwhile, in heaven, a humorous dispute unfolds between God and Jerry over Elfo's resurrection, adding a touch of divine comedy to the episode. Bean, Lucy, and Elfo journey to Mermaid Island and enjoy the mermaid's hospitality, but tension still lingers among the trio due to Elfo's resentment over Bean choosing her mother over him. When they return to Dreamland, they are met with hostility from Zog, who pelts them with stone bread and treats them as traitors. Meanwhile, Queen Una, having escaped from her anchor, joins a pirate crew led by Captain Levo, and they embark on a successful pirating adventure. Back in Dreamland, Bean and her friends reconcile with Zog after explaining Dagmar's betrayal. The pirate crew, including Una, arrives in Dreamland to trade for the Eternity Pendant, and Bean persuades Levo to help retrieve elf blood to revive the stonified citizens. With the elves' assistance, the citizens are restored, Una and Zog amicably divorce, and Derek, Zog, and Una's son returns from his window-dwelling adventures. Levo decides to stay in Dreamland, believing it holds the elves' destiny, and Una takes on her new role as a pirate captain. Later, Bean experiences recurring dreams about her mother, Dagmar, and is compelled to investigate a hidden message written in Meruvian script. Meanwhile, Elfo reconnects with the elves in the new elf quarter of Dreamland and reunites with his old girlfriend, Kissy, who inadvertently sparks jealousy in Lucy. King Zog falls in love with a forest selkie named Ursula and hides her bearskin to keep her in the castle. As tensions rise between Bean and Zog over Ursula's confinement, Bean discovers hidden passageways in the castle that lead her to a mysterious music box linked to her mother. Despite her attempts to get rid of the music box, it keeps reappearing, leaving her intrigued and unsettled. Bean struggles with her feelings and nightmares about her mother and her complicated relationship with her father. She stumbles upon a modern pub called The Jittery, where she finds solace and inspiration from a waitress named Miri. Encouraged to express herself through writing, Bean starts to work on a play about her parents' tumultuous relationship. However, her efforts face numerous challenges, including gender discrimination at the theater, where women are forbidden from working. Despite setbacks, Bean eventually delivers a passionate monologue during Amateur Night at the Jittery, where she publicly vents her frustrations and praises her father, ultimately leading to a change of heart in Zog and sparing the play tropes' lives. Later, Bean, Elfo, and Lucy have dinner at Elf Alley's only restaurant, which gets interrupted when a dragon attack devastates the town. Bean and Dreamland's knights set out to defeat the dragon, but it turns out to be an airship piloted by Sky Gunderson. Gunderson is mistakenly believed to be a shape-shifting dragon and is arrested. Bean decides to help Gunderson and travels to Steamland with him in a submarine. In Steamland, Bean discovers a technologically advanced society and gender equality and befriends Gunderson. However, she eventually learns that Gunderson intentionally attacked Dreamland to eliminate King Zog and seize power. A confrontation ensues, leading to Bean returning to Dreamland just in time to warn of the impending threat. Despite her efforts to prevent harm, a struggle for a revolver accidentally results in Zog getting shot. Bean is arrested for the accidental shooting of King Zog and charged with attempted murder. Oddval manipulates the situation to secure his position as regent, intending to control Derek as a puppet king while the arch druidess manipulates public opinion against Bean. 
Bean is subjected to attempted torture to force a false confession, but is saved by Elfo and Lucy posing as her lawyers. Derek struggles with his decision but ultimately condemns Bean to death. The trial is a farce, painting Bean as a witch, and she, along with Elfo and Lucy, is sent to the dungeons. However, they are freed by the executioner Stan and venture into the catacombs beneath the castle. Bean returns to the castle to remove the bullet from her father's stomach, but Derek arrives, and she is sentenced to be burned at the stake. Just before they face the flames, they are swallowed by a hole and find themselves in an underground dungeon of pale elves led by Dagmar. Deep underground, they discover that Dagmar has tricked the Trogs into thinking she's their savior, and they obey her without question. In the castle, Zog is recovering from a gunshot wound. Oddval and the Arch Druidess have put Derek on the throne while Zog heals. Zog overhears that Oddval and the Arch Druidess are planning to kill him, so he plans to escape with Pendergast's help. Zog asks Pendergast to fake his death and help him escape in a coffin, but the plan goes wrong when the Arch Druidess kills Pendergast and takes control of the cart with Zog's coffin, burying him alive. Zog's ordeal inside the coffin starts to drive him a bit mad. However, he's accidentally rescued by the Trogs, who are digging up graves and taking stuff. At first, Zog thinks he's in some kind of hell and wanders around underground. Eventually, he runs into Bean, who's dressed like Dagmar and pretending to be her to get away. Bean manages to persuade the Trogs that Dagmar is the fake one. They try to catch Dagmar, but she uses magic to teleport away. Bean, Zog, Lucy, and Elfo then make their way back up to the surface. Zog's memory is a bit shaky because of his time in the coffin, so he doesn't remember Oddval and the Arch Druidess plotting against him. Derek, feeling overlooked, decides to give the crown back to Zog, and everyone kind of forgets about Derek for a while. Derek wanders into the Forbidden Forest, where he keeps getting into trouble but is rescued by Sagatha, an old fairy, and they fall in love. Meanwhile, back at the castle, Bean takes charge of an investigation into who killed Pendergast. She finds a gun in Oddval's office and takes it. Derek returns to the castle with Sagatha, and they get married there. Una comes back from her pirate adventures to attend the wedding and notices that Zog is acting strangely. During the wedding, the Arch Druidess is in charge, and Derek sees a gun hidden in her sleeve. He shouts out, Chaos erupts, and it's revealed that the Arch Druidess was the one who killed Pendergast and took the gun back from Bean's room. She escapes the castle on a motorcycle and drops a map showing the way to Steamland. Bean and Elfo head to Steamland to track down the Arch Druidess, leaving Lucy behind with Zog. However, they get separated upon arrival. Elfo finds himself in a circus freak show and falls for Edith, a fortune telling machine. Bean, on the other hand, follows the Arch Druidess into a factory where she befriends Gordy, a worker who starts developing feelings for her. He agrees to help her find the Arch Druidess, but it turns out Gordy is actually Alva Gunderson, the ruler of Steamland. Alva has plans for Bean to marry him and form an alliance between their nations, but she decides to flee. Bean meets a blonde woman riding a metal horse, and they team up to locate Elfo. They discover that he's been imprisoned in the freak show. Bean frees Elfo and the other captives, but they are pursued by Alva Gunderson's robot minions. In a moment of desperation, Bean accidentally unleashes a powerful lightning attack that fries the robots, allowing them to escape. Elfo reminds Bean that they forgot to free more of the mermaid from the circus, so they go back to rescue her. They steal Alva Gunderson's boat to make their escape, with Mora's help to untether the boat as robots close in on them. Mora joins them on the boat and spends time with Bean. However, Mora eventually disappears, and Elfo accidentally crashes the boat onto an island. Bean gets a head wound, and Elfo goes off to find help. Mora suddenly appears and helps Bean wake up, taking her to Mermaid Homeland where Bean meets Mora's family. Mora plays a song for Bean on her guitar, and they share a kiss. The next morning, Bean finds herself back on the beach where Elfo left her, and she's left wondering if her encounter with Mora was real or just a dream, causing her to panic. Elfo and a distraught Bean return to the castle, where Bean's overwhelming sadness leaves her unable to function. Una, who has been tending to Zog, attempts to jolt Bean out of her despair by giving her meds. However, Bean experiences a manic episode and becomes determined to unravel the mysteries of Dreamland. She begins spying on Oddval and Sorcerio, discovering that they, along with their secret society, are conspiring against Dreamland. Bean also uncovers their involvement in the assassination of Yogg, 
Zog's more capable older brother. This revelation deeply affects Una, as Yogg was the love of her life. Determined to uncover the truth, Bean and Una decide to infiltrate an upcoming secret society meeting. Unbeknownst to them, Oddval and Sorcerio secretly desire their attendance. Oddval employs hypnosis to compel Zog to visit the basement at midnight. Zog arrives just in time to witness the secret society disrobing in preparation for their not-so-family-friendly festival. He is shocked to see Bean and Una in this state, pushing him even further into madness, exactly as Oddval had intended all along. Later, Bean notices a strange green smoke in the distance, causing panic. Una decides to return to her pirate ship to deal with the issue herself, leaving Derek to follow her. Meanwhile, Zog's madness worsens, and he's restrained in a cell by Oddval. Bean talks to him and gets him to sign a proclamation granting her temporary authority over the kingdom. But Dagmar frees Zog, and Bean tries to bring him back as he begins speaking through a puppet. Bean grows suspicious of the puppet, and Zog eventually admits he needs professional help and that Bean should run the kingdom on her own. Reluctantly, she agrees, and Zog is taken into an asylum. The green smoke turns out to be harmless, coming from Big Joe, an exorcist who previously removed Lucy from Bean. He apologizes to Bean, but secretly meets with Oddval, revealing their secret society involvement. Elfo suddenly announces an ogre attack on the kingdom, but they demand Bean hand him over. Bean refuses and tries to defend the kingdom, but Elfo decides to surrender himself to the ogres by jumping out of a window into their camp. Meanwhile, Bean and Lucy seek refuge in a tower, where Dagmar unexpectedly appears. Dagmar reveals a hidden elevator to Hell and forces Bean into it, leaving Lucy behind. Lucy attempts to save Bean but gets beheaded as the elevator descends to Hell, while his spirit awakens in Heaven. Bean finds herself trapped in Hell as her mother, Queen Dagmar, plans to marry her to Satan to make Bean the Queen of Dreamland and settle a debt with Hell. Meanwhile, Lucy's severed head briefly comes to life in Hell, and Elfo escapes from ogres and gnomes. Jerry and Lucy, now separated from their bodies, venture to Hell to rescue Bean. While in Hell, Bean tries various tactics to annoy Satan and avoid the marriage, but her efforts are thwarted by Dagmar. During the wedding ceremony, Bean cleverly signs the contract with Dagmar's hand, making Dagmar the unwilling bride of Satan. Bean, Jerry, and Lucy escape hell through an elevator but end up in Steamland, setting the stage for their next adventure. In Steamland, they encounter Elva and learn about his mysterious dealings with hell. Meanwhile, Elfo is reunited with his mother, Grogda, in Ogreland, but they face a dangerous challenge when Elfo's half-brother, Junior, challenges him to a fight to the death. Grogda and Pops share their heartfelt stories about their past, revealing the truth behind Elfo's origin. Back in Steamland, Bean and her companions try to escape on the Compensator airship, but they encounter a swarm of flying demons, leading to a comical reunion with Lucy's headless body. They return to Dreamland, only to find it deserted and inhabited by strange creatures called goons. Bean discovers that the goons are under the control of Cloyd and Becky, who have been using the Oracle Fire to transform the residents into goons. They are all imprisoned in the dungeon while Zog and his court members, Vip and Vap, join the rescue mission. They manage to escape and confront Cloyd and Becky, leading to a showdown where the residents of Dreamland rise against the villains. Bean discovers her ability to heal goon transformations by touching the scratches, much like Dagmar did to her in the past. With the help of the townspeople, Cloyd and Becky are expelled from Dreamland, restoring peace to the kingdom. Becky and Cloyd escape in an escape capsule, fooling Bean and her companions. Meanwhile, Freckles, a puppet brought to life, infiltrates Zog's dreams to manipulate him and break up Bean and Zog. He succeeds in creating vivid and unsettling dream sequences for both of them, revealing their past traumas. Freckles uses these dreams to sow discord between Bean and Zog. Eventually, they all end up under the castle in a labyrinthine series of tunnels and rooms, chasing after the dolls. However, as they reach a critical point, Bean gets stuck in a tiny door, and Zog falls into the water below, leaving their fates uncertain. Bean, Elfo, Lucy, and Zog are lured underwater by sea trogs, who mistake Zog for a legendary figure and invite them to a strange underwater ceremony. Bean reluctantly accepts the invitation to respect their culture. During the ritual, Zog and her companions become infected with parasites that alter their behavior. Bean realizes that her friends and father are in danger and tries to escape with them, 
However, they are surrounded by the Sea Trogs, who want to infect Bean as well. Una and her pirate crew arrive just in time to rescue Bean's friends, but Bean is left behind and trapped underwater. She is ultimately saved by Mora, a mermaid from her past, and is reunited with her friends on Una's ship, still wearing the star necklace given to her by Mora. The gang returns to the beach and warmly greets Bean who is secretly cherishing her memories of Mora. Zog ends up reuniting with Ursula, a bear he had once encountered before, and realizes he's fallen for Ursula. Also, P.T., a member of the League of Gallivanting Scrutinators, aims to capture Ursula for his freak show. Meanwhile, Bean, Elfo, and Lucy accidentally discover a gruesome underwater cave filled with the remains of elves, mermaids, and humans who were killed in a magical battle. Bean also witnesses a vision of the past but keeps it to herself. Jasper enters the scene, and Zog decides to take him under his wing. Afterward, Zog, Jasper, and Ursula return to Dreamland as a makeshift family, leaving Bean contemplating her own romantic and emotional complexities on the beach. In Dreamland, Bean experiences a series of unsettling recurring dreams, filled with surreal and nightmarish imagery. As she grapples with these dreams, various events unfold in the castle. Elfo infiltrates the Trogs, but his disguise is revealed, leading to his recruitment as a double spy. Lucy and Miri barricade tunnels to protect the castle, and Derek and Jasper continue their rivalry. Meanwhile, the elves, determined to reclaim the castle, launch an attack with Levo leading the way. In the midst of the chaos, Levo mistakenly consumes a mysterious substance, transforming into a trog. Levo's transformation into a trog shocks both elves and trogs, leading to a unification of the two groups. Bean experiences recurring nightmares, and Lucy and Miri discuss her royal responsibilities. Elfo is kidnapped by Trogs, who plan to make him drink a mysterious substance known as the Goo. Bean attempts to rescue Elfo but is interrupted by Lucy, resulting in all three of them falling into a waterfall. Derek, Jasper, and Freckles confront a mean elf gang but ultimately decide to leave Dreamland together. And in a surreal dream, Bean discovers that the mysterious woman she was chasing is a version of herself in her mother's clothing. Bean confronts a dark, malevolent version of herself, referred to as Bad Bean, in her dreams. Bad Bean attempts to manipulate Bean into using her hidden powers to destroy Dreamland. Meanwhile, Zog searches for Derek, Jasper, Freckles, and Snarla, who have run away and ends up getting captured himself in Steamland. In the real world, Bad Bean takes over Bean's body and tries to hide her true identity from Bean's friends, while Lucy and Alpha work to rescue Bean from the dream world. Ultimately, Bean and Bad Bean engage in a struggle within their shared consciousness, resulting in Bad Bean's defeat and the return of the real Bean to the real world. However, upon her return, Bean faces a new threat as her mother, Dagmar, arrives with Satan, and the episode concludes with Bean being thrown off the castle parapet by Dagmar. Dagmar's revelation about her sinister intentions involving Bad Bean seemingly leaves Bean dead, but she is actually rescued by Mora. Elfo discovers Bad Bean's remaining body and, with Bop Girl's help, hides it from Dagmar in Satan's investigation. It is also revealed that Satan is Lucy's father. Meanwhile, Zog unexpectedly becomes a wrestler in Steamland, winning a match off script, while Bean, Elfo, and Mora join forces to deal with Bad Bean's reanimated body, eventually shoving it down a laundry chute. In Dreamland's Cathedral, Bean and Mora reconcile their misunderstandings and set off on a mission to rescue Zog and Steamland, arming themselves with weapons and the arms of prudence. As they search for Zog, they encounter Alva Gunderson's treachery but manage to break free thanks to Bean's powerful magic. Elsewhere, Bad Bean's reanimated body chases Elfo, and Zog, Bean, and Mora discover the captivity of Jasper, Derek, and Freckles at PT Freak Show, setting the stage for their intertwined adventures. After rescuing her father, Bean's journey takes her back to Dreamland, where her friends have rallied an army to confront Dagmar. With Bad Bean brought back to life and Dagmar ready to harness Dreamland's unique magic, a climactic battle ensues. Bean's newfound mastery of her powers, along with the support of her friends and the creatures of Dreamland, becomes crucial in the final showdown. The fate of Dreamland, and possibly all of existence, hangs in the balance as Bean must make a fateful choice regarding her mother's existence and the future of the kingdom. In the final, emotionally charged battle between Bean and her evil counterpart, Bad Bean, 
Mora tragically loses her life, driving Bean to unleash her incredible magical powers, decimating her mother's army and ultimately defeating Bad Bean. Held captive by her mother, Bean's friends attempt to stop Dagmar, but her ruthless actions lead to Lucy's death, causing Satan to abandon her. Bean, grieving and fueled by determination, finally confronts her mother. Despite her initial attempts to use love as a weapon, Bean ultimately decides to sacrifice magic itself to save Dreamland. In a climactic showdown, she stabs her mother with a crystal, immobilizing her in the place where magic is created. Una and Elfo rescue Bean just in time, leaving Dagmar trapped. In a parallel story, Lucy, in heaven, rebels against a seemingly indifferent god, breaking the deity's head, a light bulb, causing the universe to falter, until Lucy manages to restore it, earning one wish from God. Lucy selflessly wishes for Mora's resurrection, reuniting her with Bean and concluding the series with a bittersweet yet heartwarming resolution. In the aftermath of their triumph over Dagmar, Bean announces her decision to step down as Queen of Dreamland, and King Zog chooses to live in the forest with Ursula and their son. Mop Girl is crowned as the new Queen of Dreamland, with Elfo as her consort and Murkimer as the Prime Minister. Meanwhile, Alva's plan to kidnap Bean and travel to the moon backfires as he ends up stranded there with the Archdruidus. On the day of Bean and Mora's wedding, the two decide to elope, leading to unexpected weddings for Sorcerio and Oddval, Elfo's parents, and Murkimer. Derek embarks on a pirate's life with his mother, while Satan offers Dagmar a chance to accompany him to hell, but she refuses and is imprisoned alongside Freckles on a cliff for eternity. Bean, Mora, and Lucy are granted happier fates, with Lucy receiving angelic wings and a halo from God. Ultimately, Dreamland vanishes from view as Mop Girl orders the drawbridge to be closed. So that's it from us. If you enjoyed the video, then leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next one.